What is the most effective way of storing your data? SSDs are great, something like the Samsung 870 is ideal for data storage. But what about NVMEs? They're meant to be really easy to install on our machines and most of the time your motherboard will have a slot, an M.2 slot, where you can just fit it and one simple screw you've got yourself more storage. Check out the different lengths of NVMEs with the 42, 60 and 80 millimeter being the most common sizes. Now these are really fast with their data transfers, really low latency and oh don't judge the b-roll too close is he destroying that screw okay never mind the joys of uh, hardware now one of the consequences of this added performance and low latency is increased temperature generally you want these nvmes to sit no higher than 75 degrees to manage the thermal load you could definitely use an adapter like this the asus hyper to try and cool them down but for now let's do a buyer's guide as of maybe check out the pcie 5.0 NVMEs, really solid performance, but they're pretty expensive and you need a suitable motherboard. PCIe 4.0, lots of options out there, and that's sort of the current modern day standard. And then there's the older form factor, PCIe 3.0, pretty good value. There's uh, some decent prices and pretty solid speed. Now, which ones am I using? Well, I'm using the Samsung 980 as well as the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, and I've recently acquired the ADATA 1, well, actually 2 terabyte, SSDs as well. All of those in the table were one terabyte for comparison. Now on to the main course. We're going to look at different adapters that we can fit to our machines to allow us to incorporate NVMEs. Now the first and really solid option would be the Gigabyte Aorus Gen 4 AIC NVMe adapter. This is a really cool solution with a nice aluminium backplate. It's also got a massive copper heatsink as well as thermally conductive silicone really generous amount as well to manage the thermal load. Generally my NVMe sit at a really good temperature on this particular adapter. Now cost, it's getting a bit rare. They're about 200 US dollars on Amazon and generally quite hard to find. So maybe they're a little bit old now. In terms of my personal editing solution, I've got four Samsung 980s in the Aorus and my Z840 workstation. Now the next adapter of interest is the Asus Hyper M.2 Gen 4 NVMe adapter. This particular one also has four slots, a nice aluminium uh, thermal heatsink, and we have some silicone, thermally conductive silicone to manage thermos. There's another related adapter, it's actually a slightly downgrade version, which is the Asus Hyper M.2 V2, don't let the V2 fool you. This is PCIe 3.0 and accommodates four M.2 slots. Very large heatsink, nice thermally conductive silicone to keep the NVMEs nice and cool pretty solid option uh, but definitely take note that one is going to be for PCIe 3.0 and you will absolutely for all of these adapters require bifurcation on your motherboard so check out your motherboard specifications so a quick comparison between those two I think the Hyper M.2 Gen 4 would be the best purchase there for the 100 US dollars give or take next one on the list is the HP Z Turbo Drive Quad Pro NVMe adapter which fits four NVMe's PCIe 3.0, we have a nice aluminium heatsink and a very, very stylish design. You can do some raid on these adapters as well, well worth the time. Check out that fan, very stylish design. Now this particular adapter has one absolutely standout feature compared to the others. This one has power loss protection, meaning if the power cuts, your NVMEs will not lose all the data they were busy reading. And check out that thermal, thermally conductive silicone, very, very cool. Whoa! Okay, good catch. This particular adapter is valued much higher than the other two adapters, so this one does require a bigger budget, but power loss protection could well be worth it. And that's our HPZ 440 snuck into a fractal defined 7XL case. Still working on that video. One day we will see a case swap for that motherboard. But there it is, the Z Turbo Drive looking at home in that machine. Now for some speed tests. We're going to use Black Magic Designs disk speed test. We're going to take a five gigabyte file and do a read and write test on different NVMEs. The first one in our lineup is the Samsung 980 fitted into the Aorus Gen 4 adapter in the HPZ 840. Now right now on this disk we're getting around a thousand megabytes per second write. And if you know these NVMEs well, you'll realize that's really low. It's meant to be high. Don't fret. There's a reason. It's currently recording the video footage that 
we are viewing and thus it's being overloaded. But nonetheless, we're still getting a thousand megabytes per second on that particular NVMe. And take note, these are DRAM-less, so performance will be a little bit hammered when you start loading them up. So it took about 8.5 seconds for our file transfer. Now let's give the 980 a fair trial. We'll select another one in the Aorus adapter and preferably one that's not currently being used. And check that out, we're getting 2100, give or take, write speed and around 2000 megabyte read speed. Now take note, this speed will vary depending on our process. In this case, we're using a five gigabyte file for our transfer speed test. So that speed will vary depending on what you're transferring, uh, but definitely a pretty solid speed, absolutely ideal for lots of applications, even potentially up to about maybe 8K, is that 8K? Uh, pretty low frame rate, but yes, you might just be able to do 8K 60 frame per second editing on the Samsung 980, which is pretty capable, not bad. Okay, next one in our lineup, SSD. Can you edit videos from an SSD? These are cost effective, usually cheaper than the NVMEs, so pretty stand out in that there's the All Master hard drive adapter. You can fit up to six SSDs or two SSDs and one 3.5 inch hard drive. We're going to fit two four terabyte ssds the 970s check out a future video where we make a bit more room in our z840 for storage we'll check that video out but in the meantime let's jump to the future and see how they perform so we're going to see pretty solid read and write speeds again a 5 gig file going to each of them and it's around 470 mega 470 that is megabytes per second write speed about 520 megabytes per second read speed so these are more than capable to handle most tasks that you throw at them and take note this will absolutely handle 4k video at 60 frame making them ideal for video editing and pretty much any application gaming you name it next hard drive on the list is the iron wolf pro the 16 terabyte very capable nas hard drive now this is one of the downsides of the 3.5 inch hard disks they are not as fast as our modern storage solutions but they're still pretty capable now check the speed we're getting around 150 megabytes per second write speed now the real question is is that enough for you to do modern tasks reliably now you see the timer we're already up at 25 seconds meaning this is going to hammer your efficiency so generally speaking these are great maybe as a scratch disk if you just want to throw some files on there and move them around but generally you're not going to want to do all your work from one of these drives not to mention they are a bit more noisy as well uh, but it's usually not too bad so absolutely consider using these maybe up to about 1080p 60 frame video editing if you were desperate but generally they're more for long-term storage large volume Good cost efficiency but read and write speeds not that great 150 260 megabytes per second we can definitely do better definitely not suited for 4k video as well as i have discovered in the past now on to the next test now the next test is an interesting one because it's not technically a hard drive fitted in this machine that's right we're going to test a 10 gigabit ethernet connection to see how that performs now this Check out a related video if you want to see the full compartment and all the components. But we have our HPZ840 workstation. It's connected to a very nice 10 gigabit network interface card. So this is the X540T2 from Intel that allows this HPZ840 to connect to a host machine, which is actually a HPZ420. Now this HPZ420 workstation is currently loaded with hard drives and it forms a NAS storage system solution for me. How am I powering that system? What operating system? Well, it's using TrueNAS Core to manage the hard drive. So the hard drive of interest in this test is going to be a Western Digital 10TB Red NAS Plus hard drive. So pretty decent performance, but you'll notice the speed there, that particularly the write speed, is sitting around 50 megabytes per second. Now, this is a little bit slow, but keep in mind, we're having to transfer this data through quite a lot of loopholes. And you may also have noticed in the background there, we have a 10 gigabit ethernet switch. This is the Flex XG, a very, very capable switch from Ubiquiti that I have to use to connect 
the two network interface cards. So very important to get to the 10 gigabit speeds. And this particular unit has four 10 gigabit ethernet ports, making it ideal for most small home networks or maybe even business networks, quite cool. But check out the speeds, we are definitely down. That will not be suitable for lots of modern tasks. Uh, there might be many reasons why the speed is a little bit lower than we would expect for 10 gigabit. But check out the read speeds. Read speeds are relatively decent, 600. And again, this is for a very specific task, a five gigabyte file transfer. So 100 seconds on the right time, that is just not gonna be enough for modern day tasks. But pretty cool, you can actually read your files from there. So if you were to set this up as a true NAS system, you can absolutely manage your files. On to our next drive, the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Take note, this one does have DRAM fitted onto the PCB of the NVMe. As a result, performance should be much better than that of the 980. So having a quick look, this particular one is mounted in a JE air-cooled NVMe adapter. We're getting read speeds that are pretty decent, 2500, higher than the 980, but the write speeds are a little bit slower. Keep in mind, this one is loaded with the Windows operating system, and it is actually contributing to the recording of the footage that we are viewing. Thus, we can't fully blame it for being a little bit slower. It's also really full. Next adapter of interest. No, we're running into our conclusions. We've done really well. We'll do more adapters in the future. But for now, check out the conclusions. The Samsung 980 is a solid drive. It runs really well. Short bursts. But if you overload it, it will unfortunately get a bit slower. There's no DRAM on the actual NVMe. The Samsung 970 performed really well, generally outperforming the Samsung 980, particularly when the cache gets saturated. So keep an eye out on those. DRAM chips much, much better. They cost a bit more. The 870 Evo in RAID 1 configuration worked really well. Pretty solid. You can do 4K editing from those. The Iron Wolf, really, really good. But it is a little bit slower. So keep in mind, everything that you do will take a little bit longer. And then obviously our 10 gigabit networking interface to our 10 terabyte hour drive. A little bit slow on the write speeds, but pretty solid on the read speeds. Okay, so standout features. Keep an eye out for a future video where we're going to fit two terabyte and four of them ADATA Legend 800 NVMEs into one of these three adapters. We'll have to test which one. Stay tuned for a future video where we go through and test three of those adapters. I'll see you in the next video. Well done.